Hello folks. Um, so, not quite sure now if this is going to make any sense, but I have a video uh, that I'm not sure if it's going to come out yet or not due to my camera fritzing out from moisture. Uh, but pretty much, um, I've been looking recently at installing uh, the last part of the battery into the Panzer and my original goal from day one re really um, after I had gotten the first two set of uh, the, the two modules in underneath the bonnet uh, was that I was going to put the third module um, intact just into the boot so I started poking around in the boot and looking where I could put it and two things started to go on in my mind. The first was that I didn't really like um, any of the positions that I was kind of finding in there for locating the battery. It was just going to be... Uh, it was just going to be not something that was just sitting right with me for want of a better word. So. Uh, the second thing that really tipped the balance was it was actually looking to be quite difficult to get secure mountings in there. See, see, keep in mind that the battery must be mounted very securely so that in the event of uh, violent manoeuvring or um, an accident, that it doesn't just tear loose and uh, cause all kinds of problems. So that was all starting to look quite tricky. I then kind of slowed myself down a bit and I started having a look and I wondered if it would be possible to get the battery in underneath the back seats where the fuel tank was. And this was kind of an issue that had gone around in my in my head since the very first conversion on the E36. And I then later looked at it again on the land yacht, but the way the land yacht played out, I needed the car on the road ASAP. Um, and I just decided to bite the bullet and just put the cells into the boot. Uh, but this time I kind of said to myself, well, maybe it's worth having a look and see if we can actually get them in there. So I put the back end of the car up on the, my new uh, ramps and had a look in there. I kind of started to look pretty good. Um, it started to look like the two sections on each side of the drive shaft would take uh, quite a significant amount of cells. So I came back in and I tore down that last uh, part of the battery pack and if I can get the video of that to work uh, I will be able to show that to you. I'm just not quite certain how that actually is going to process for me due to some camera malfunctions. So let me just wheel this guy over here for a second. It might kind of help to uh, illustrate the point just in case again that that video doesn't work out for me. Let me see if you guys can see that. I'm going to tilt down a bit there. So what I did was I kind of broke the pack down and I've made two kind of subsections here. Well there's, uh, there's actually three subsections. Sub let me um, let me just see if I can get this stuff into shot here for you. Um, some very good videos on tearing down these uh, packs anyway, in case my own doesn't uh, work out. So what I pretty much did was just broke it down, and there's two uh, sections there. That have basically, uh, I think they've got six modules, is it? I can't remember now. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we've got six modules. And uh, that's pretty much what I can fit in each side um, of the drive shaft uh, from a, from a uh, perspective of space. And leaves me then 
with these four uh, to find a home for, which I'm pretty much I'll be able to do. So I hit my local hardware there fairly recently and uh, got myself some 6mm threaded rod, um, nice and cheap, no muss, no fuss. So we're going to be able to remake, uh, we're going to be able to remake these packs uh, into two smaller, or sorry, we're going to be able to remake it into two smaller packs here. Uh, with just some very simple hardware and uh, what I'm going to do then is I make a, poly, a, a polycarbonate top just to go on there um, and we make that a piece of 3mm polycarbonate just to protect the top crank them down and we'll be able to reuse the original braces um, just to go across these points we've got our two aluminium castings uh, to form the base plates and you know uh, it, it should it should kind of work out now you might ask yourself then why do I have the welder set up here well or why am I looking at the welder so there's a little bit of a I suppose a little bit of a reason for that is that uh, What I've, what I've really got here, um, let me just move, move these cells out of the way here, make a little room, oh, go on cells, these furniture dollies are fantastic just for keeping stuff mobile around the place, yeah, more dodgy camera work I'm afraid, as is my kind of uh, signature. So, this is my MIG welder. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit modified. I've had this now about, about 12 going on 13 years. Um, it's an old uh, UK made machine from approximately, I would say, the 1970s. Um, it was originally a three phase, 300 amp machine. Uh, for pretty he pretty he heavy duty uh, fabrication work and I got it from a friend of mine uh, that was in the fabrication business and um, I basically swapped him some uh, work in lieu of this machine and uh, it was in a very poor state when I actually got it it w wasn't working and uh, Various people had uh, told my friend that it was non-repairable and so forth. So I took the machine and um, uh, basically made new controls for it, converted to run on single phase 230 volts. And it's been a mainstay uh, in all of my, pro of my projects uh, for, as I say, well in excess of... Uh, a decade now. Um, so, what this has really to do, I suppose, with the whole Panzer project now is that if I'm going to go mounting my cells underneath the car, then I need to be able to be able to weld to the car's bodywork and to do small scale fine uh, fab work. So, this machine. Um, when I took the transformer apart and I re, uh, reworked all the tappings uh, to get it to run on single phase, has got uh, I think five, yeah, five uh, what, what, what in the industry would be called heat settings on the machine. Um, it's very, very powerful. Um, up on number five, uh, Running with one millimeter wire, I can pretty much weld half inch steel plate in a single pa in a single pass. Um, it gets way too hot for the little torch that I have. Um, if I were to attempt to do that for a long period of time, this thing is just built like a ta a tank. Um, 
it's probably it's probably older than me and it'll still be around when I'm gone. That was just the way that machines were built back in the day. So what I'm looking to do um, in terms of the Panzer work now and in terms of more of the car work that I would undertake would be to uh, get this machine to cool down a little bit and get it to run 0.6 millimeter wire so that uh, so that I can weld thin section steel um, without blowing big big holes uh, through it so when I first got this idea that I was going to put the cells in underneath the car a few days ago I started looking around for a small MIG plant and uh, unfortunately uh, this country suffers um, quite a lot in this regard from you know I'm not going to get into I'm not going to go off on a big uh, diatribe here but we don't really have an industrial past uh, and we certainly don't seem to have an industrial present um, so the machines that are available on the market here are either um, machines from you know kind of olden times such as this one um, of that particular vintage that are just being sold for just ridiculous money or their modern day um, mass manufactured rubbish from the far east that are being sold as professional products uh, and you can pretty much forget any kind of support spare parts or anything of the sort with them Modern machines from the big suppliers are just way outside of, of, of anything that I could afford. Basically all of my mach machinery, welders, drills, saws, lathe, all that has come from the UK. Uh, where they tend to have a much more uh, broad range of this kind of equipment available at much more realistic prices. But... Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. That's where I start going off on a big uh, setting the world to rights kind of a speech and you probably already tuned out. I can't say I blame you. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having a look at this welding machine uh, to see if I can get it to run 0.6 millimeter wire and if I can do some modifications to it so that I can run uh, weld on thin section steel in the region of perhaps even down to one millimeter thick so that's kind of where we're at panzer wise and kind of where I'm going with the uh, um, with the uh, battery uh, the weather is terrible at the minute so I'm not doing a lot of the of the the other jobs that I would have planned to do so I'm pretty much just um, trying to get this battery stuff sorted out and see if we can make the welder work for us so as always folks thanks a lot for what for watching thanks for all the support and we'll see you in the next video